All right, this is gonna be a pretty short lesson with just a few tips to help you become a better speller. And the tips are as follows, how to make your own spelling list, how to use mnemonics to improve your spelling, organizing and reorganizing your list, uh, different ways you can test yourself to improve your spelling, and how to read actively. All right, to begin with, make your own spelling list. If you grew up uh, in an English-speaking country or studied a lot of English, you probably were given a set of words to memorize for spelling purposes. Congratulations, you're going to do that now again. Uh, to make your own spelling list, keep a list of words that you frequently misspell. You're going to have to pay attention to your own writing to do this, but just keep an eye out for it. Your computer is a good place to keep a list like this, a program like Microsoft Excel or some other database program. Uh, add to the list whenever you run across a new or newly troublesome word. So anytime you find, ah, I can just never seem to spell this word right, okay, go add it to your list. Write down the definition of the troublesome word right next to it. It helps to remember what word you're trying to spell. Be sure to include any homophones and their definitions. So if the problem you're having in spelling this word is that you're really spelling another word instead, add all of those homophones to your list. Study your list often. Yes, you really do have to memorize. If you're not one of those people who's a naturally wonderful speller, studying is pretty much your only recourse. Okay. I, did, I lied. It's not your only recourse. You can also create mnemonics as part of your study. Mnemonics are tricks to help you remember important pieces of information. There are plenty of spelling mnemonics and you can always create your own. The only real trick to creating a mnemonic is picking something that you personally are going to remember. So, for example, uh, the word cemetery. A lot of people try to spell it with an A in there somewhere, usually uh, in front of the R. Well, that's wrong. It's only got E's in it. So one way to remember that cemetery has nothing but E's for its vowels uh, is to remember that they are lined up like tombstones, which, of course, you find in a cemetery. Stationary has an E toward the end, as in envelope. Remember, stationary with the E before the R means paper products, things you write on. Stationary with an A before the R means in one place. Good thing to keep those straight. Uh, this is my personal favorite spelling mnemonic. Weird is spelled weirdly, in violation of the usual I before E rule. I before E, except after C, that whole poem. Okay, weird doesn't follow that rule. It has E-I. So I always remember that, you know, since weird means strange, weird is spelled weirdly. Helps me remember it. Uh, parallel, which is another commonly misspelled word, has two L's right in the middle. has parallel L's in the middle of it. So these kinds of tricks can help you remember the spelling of words that give you trouble. Whenever you come up with a word that you don't know how to spell or can't spell consistently, see if you can come up with a mnemonic that you personally will remember. Because if it works for you, that's all that matters. All right, organize and reorganize your list. You'll learn the words better if you study them in different contexts and different orders, because then you'll learn the words themselves, not just the order of the list. So you might want to try grouping words with the same beginnings or the same endings, words with double vowels or words with double consonants. If there's an aspect of English spelling that's giving you trouble, try grouping a bunch of words together so you can see the pattern in how they're spelled. Uh, come up with at least three different ways to organize your words and study each version of your list. That way, when you run up against a troublesome word, you can go, oh, it's on the double consonant list and on the double vowel list and on the doesn't follow the I before E uh, list or whatever. It'll help you remember these things. And finally, make flashcards of the words and word groups. All right, test yourself. There are two really good ways to test yourself on your spelling. The first is to take traditional spelling tests, just like you might have taken in school. Have a friend read your spelling words aloud, using them in sentences, if possible, so you know which homophone you're dealing with, and write down your answers, then have your friend check them. Okay. The other way to test yourself is basically to have a one-person spelling bee. Now, if you've never seen uh, a spelling bee in an English-speaking country, basically you have a bunch of people, usually children, who get up in front of the judges one at a time. The judges give them a word. The child is allowed to ask for a definition or a sentence or a couple of other things. Um, and then the kid has to spell the word. So, you know, if your word is cat, you would say cat, C-A-T, cat, all right? Uh, and this is a very common competition. There's even a national spelling bee in the United States, and it's something of a spectator sport. 
so you can have your own spelling bee. Ask your friend to quiz you on your words and try spelling them out loud. Now the reason this is a different kind of test from a written test, and the reason it works for some people where written tests don't, some people learn spelling better visually, so writing words down and seeing them helps a lot. Some people learn it better through their ears, they're more auditory learners. So if you're an auditory learner, a spelling bee might be an excellent way for you to improve your spelling. However, in the case, if you're having a one-person spelling bee, watch out for homophones, because of course they sound the same, and watch out for accents. My favorite accents in a spelling bee story. Uh, I had a friend once who attended a spelling bee in Texas, which of course has a very distinctive accent. If you've ever heard a Texas accent, you'll never mistake it. Um, and uh, my friend was from California, and her son was in the spelling bee, and he was a you know, first or second grader, so they had very simple words. And the judge says, you know, your word is wire. And the kid thinks, goes, wire, okay? Wire, W-I-R-E, wire. And the judge goes, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Of course, now the kid is disqualified. Uh, several people in the room get up and yell, he spelled that right, and, you know, what's wrong with you? Uh, and finally, somebody has the wit to ask the judge to use the word in the sentence. And the judge looks right at the person and goes, where are you going? Which, of course, in a U.S. Southern accent means, where are you going? The word where is pronounced wire. So, if you have someone quizzing you on your spelling words, please make sure that you understand their accent and that you're not getting the words mixed up. Otherwise, you'll get disqualified from the spelling bee for misspelling where. All right, read actively. This is the way that most spellers learn to spell most words. Uh, most teens and adults no longer study spelling. It's something you tend to study in the early elementary grades. So most of the spelling we absorb now comes from what we read. Unfortunately, if you're a poor speller, you probably don't notice spelling in what you read as much as good spellers do. You know those people who find typographic errors in the newspaper? You're probably not one of them. Okay, here's how to be one of them, at least a little bit. As you read, stop occasionally and look hard at the spelling of the words in the sentences. Try to imagine the words spelled in different ways and mostly laugh at how funny that would be. Focus on the image of the typed words to reinforce correct spelling. Again, if you're a visual learner, this is a really helpful trick. As you read, this is helpful for auditory learners, imagine the sound of the words you're reading or try to pronounce different spellings aloud. How would a different spelling change the sound? When I was learning spelling as a child, I would often pronounce, overpronounce words in my head uh, to try to remember how to spell them. So, for example, to try to learn how to spell onomatopoeia, which is one of those words that drives you nuts, in my head it's onomatopoeia, which is not how I say it out loud, but it helps me remember that it is O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A, -O -O -E onomatopoeia. So if that helps as you're studying these words, and particularly as you're encountering more difficult words in what you read, go with it. Nobody's going to know that you're making funny noises inside your head. Finally, and most importantly for your spelling, keep reading. Always, 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 always read. It's the best thing for your writing, it's the best thing for your spelling, and it's the best thing for your grammar. And that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching. Educator.com.